The series opens by showing the third grade students at Xianjin High School doing their midterm exams. All students look serious doing their exam because the exam was one of the exercises before the College Scholastic Ability Test or CSAT exam. When looking out of the window, there were a bunch of giant spheres floating in the sky. One year ago, thousands of giant spheres mysteriously appeared in the sky, not only in South Korea but also in several other countries. No one as yet could confirm where the giant sphere came from, but some people believed that the sphere is alien. The militaries were gathered because apparently, one of the mysterious spheres had fallen to the earth. One of the military commanders named Cho Young-sik showed up and suddenly shot the sphere, however, because nothing happened, he ordered his men to fire the RPG, and after being shot, the sphere turned into a lot of small squid-like aliens and started attacking them. For weeks later, in Seongjin High School, a teacher named Ms. Park went to a classroom to return the students' exam results. After that, the principal announced every teacher to gather at the staff office. After that, Ms. Park returned to class with a serious face and said that the CSAT exam would be abolished this year. According to the appeal from the National Defense Minister, all adults, including third grade high school students would undergo military training to protect themselves from the threat of the giant sphere. The students who were confused were wondering what happened, because, as far as they knew, the giant spheres were not dangerous. Ms. Park couldn't surely explain what happened, but she was sure that military training was very necessary so that students had the basic skills to survive. To increase the students' interests, the government would implement a point system where students who want to take part in the training will get additional points that they could use to enter college and each student would be given an approval letter that could only be signed by their parents. After Ms. Park left the class, the class troublemaker named Kwan el -ha approached the other student named Junk Yang Han. The two students had had a bad relationship for a long time so the slightest misunderstanding could lead to a fight. After the students got permission from their parents, everyone returned to school while bringing their belongings to class. In the classroom, Ms. Park introduced a soldier named Lieutenant Lee Chun-ho who would later become their commander. The lieutenant explained that from that day on, they would undergo military training for several weeks and were not allowed to leave the school environment. Yu Jong, the class president, was immediately appointed as the leader, and Shi hee would document everything during the training. Any student who dared to go against the commander's orders would get a point deduction as well as a penalty. After that explanation, a sergeant named Won Bin then directed the students to their respective dormitories. They put their belongings away and then immediately gathered to undergo the training in the schoolyard. At the beginning of the training, the students didn't seem to take the training seriously and instead made weapons as toys. It made Lieutenant Lee mad. He told everyone to be serious because the weapons they were holding right now can save them or kill them. Since that day, the students began to undergo training like army troops. Their strength and abilities were trained so hard that some of the students started complaining. In the evening, Yang Han reported to Lieutenant Lee that Ilha still had his cell phone with him. Lieutenant Lee immediately confiscated it and made Ilha even more vengeful toward Yang Han. They were about to fight so they were punished by Lieutenant Lee. While they were punished, they were about to fight again, but suddenly, Chi Yeol showed up and stopped them. Suddenly, the giant sphere fell on the school building and fell in front of the three of them, but instead of reporting it, they continued arguing and Ilha pushed Yang Han towards the giant sphere. Suddenly, the giant sphere changed its shape to something like an octopus, and its legs wrapped around Yang Han's body and devoured him alive. After that incident, Lieutenant Lee asked Ms. Park, Ilha, and Chi Yeol to keep Yang Han's death a secret for a while so as not to stir up the school and instead made the situation more chaotic. Rather than making a fuss, Ms. Park was more focused on the mental health of her two students, who still looked shocked after the incident. To cover up Yang Han's death, Ilha Dan Chi Yeol was asked to tell the students that Yang Han was injured and had to be sent home. It turned out that this was the real threat that the government and military were trying to cover up. They don't want people to panic even though they know that the creatures they faced were very dangerous. So dangerous that even after the last incident, only Lieutenant Lee survived, while the others were eaten by the aliens who came from the giant sphere. The next day, the government announced that more giant spheres started to fall to the earth and the military commanders urged them to immediately carry out weapon training to prepare students before something terrible happened. Day by day, military training was getting tougher, and even students were now required to complete all training first before they were allowed to eat. During weapon assembling practice, one of the students named Noah Sol kept getting difficulties performing holding back other students. Because Essiel always failed, Lieutenant Lee kept asking her to repeat the practice until late at night. That made everyone annoyed because they had to wait for Aesiel while they were already hungry. Lieutenant Lee said that military training is not about individuals but teamwork. If one of them lags behind or fails, then they will all be screwed. The next day, the students would undergo shooting practice somewhere far away. They were escorted directly by Lieutenant Lee, Sergeant Wanbin, another female soldier named Jae-yeon, and also Ms. Park. During the trip, 
The students were surprised to see the outside world where so many shops were closed and no one was around. Without them knowing, at the end of the road, there was a hole in which there was a sphere that might have just fallen. Long story short, they arrived at the shooting training ground. Every student was trained to shoot on target, but there was only one student who succeeded namely Li Na Ra. After the training process was over, they all prepared to return to school. In the middle of the journey, Lieutenant Lee began to be suspicious when he saw several gunshot marks around the place. He and the soldiers then decided to check the situation while Ms. Park and the other students were asked to rest there. While the others were resting, two students named Taemon and Hirak secretly went to the nearest department store. Ms. Park noticed their departure and then invited Yu Jong to look for them. While they were walking around, Yu Jong suddenly saw a gun with a mutilated hand attached to it. She screamed at the top of her lungs and made all the students come to that place. Upon seeing that, they began to suspect something was wrong when suddenly, Ms. Park saw so many corpses of high school students who had died because of the alien attacks. Hearing the noise, the aliens were provoked and started coming at them. In front of all her students, Ms. Park then died after getting stabbed by a large number of small aliens while trying to buy some time for the students to escape. The aliens then chased the students who were finally separated from each other. Lieutenant Lee and the other soldiers who heard the gunshots immediately rushed to save the students. They managed to find some of the students, while in another place, three female students, namely Ha Na, Bo Ra, and Sunny, fled towards the parking lot. Ha Na was caught by the alien but thankfully, Jae Yeon, the female soldier, came to rescue her, although, in the end, Jae Yeon was killed by the alien. Ha Na, who panicked, then got into the car and locked the car, while Bo Ra and Sunny had to get into the emergency room when a loud noise suddenly came out of the room and provoked the aliens. At the same time, Taemun and Hirak who was still in the convenience store noticed the gunshots as they were about to leave. They then saw one of the aliens and without the slightest fear, they approached the alien, but after realizing that the alien was very dangerous, Taemun and Hirak cooperated to put down the alien. They trapped it in the freezer, and unexpectedly, their efforts succeeded because after being put in the freezer, the alien froze and died. Somewhere else, students who hadn't met Lt. Lee tried their best to cooperate and protect each other, as well as Lt. Lee and the other students. After the terrible incident, they collected Ms. Park and the others bodied and mourned their death. They finally realized what they were facing and like it or not, they have to be able to protect themselves and be trained to face the aliens. After arriving at school, the students who were still in shock felt very scared and didn't want to continue all of this. They all agreed to ask Lt. Lee to send them home, but unfortunately, Lt. Lee replied that all their parents have been evacuated to the quarantine area, so if they leave the school, they would only endanger their own lives. The school was the safest place for them. Not believing what Lt. Lee said to them, they decided to send four of them outside to check on their parents, but their action was found out and they were immediately sent back to their barracks. The school was guarded very strictly by the military. They began to rebel by inviting students from other classes and telling them about the death of Ms. Park and the danger from the aliens. As a result, all students began to demonstrate and demanded to be returned to their homes immediately. When they were demonstrating, a giant sphere suddenly fell in front of them. Lieutenant Lee shouted to the students and ordered them to return to class and save themselves while he and the other soldiers would try to stop the aliens. Not only one, but other giant spheres also started falling down, causing many soldiers and students to be killed. Because of that situation, Lieutenant Lee and Sergeant Wan Bin lead the students who survived to collect their weapons because they planned to take the students to the military base. Thanks to their cooperation, they managed to get into the military car and tried to leave. Although their departure was actually quite difficult because they were forced to leave one student who died because she could not get into the car. After that, two military cars finally left for the military base. One of the cars driven by a soldier suddenly had an accident because the soldier who drove the truck was dead after getting attacked by the alien. The students behind tried to get out and kill the alien. After successfully killing the alien, they realized that one of their friends was injured, and because it was not safe to stay there, they all decided to find a safer hiding place. Before leaving, one of them left a sign so that later, if someone was looking for them, they would be able to find them as soon as possible. At the same time, Lt. Lee's entourage finally arrived at the military base. Once there, the students realized that the other entourage had not arrived at the base. The soldiers then lead the students to the barrack so they could rest, but of course, they couldn't rest because their friends hadn't managed to get there safely. Lt. Lee was also worried and made every effort to be able to return to look for the first group. But unfortunately, his intention was denied by the leader, because it was very dangerous. Seeing that, Wan Bin then secretly stole one of the military car keys and gave it to him. The plan was unfortunately overheard by Duk Zhang who immediately told the other students about it. The students then agreed to go with Lt. Li. Long story short, after walking quite a distance, the first group finally arrived at a house. They were able to treat the sick using some medicines and makeshift equipment. 
A female student then accidentally found a pack of instant noodles, and because she had not eaten for days, the student hid the noodles from her other friends and ate the instant noodles alone outside. After finishing the pack of instant noodles, she was surprised to see the alien not far from her. She immediately ran away from there and told the other students to evacuate inside the building and closed the door tightly. The alien tried to enter through the ventilator pipe. They were scared. They tried to escape and separated into two rooms. Each room was then closed very tightly so the alien couldn't get inside. Lieutenant Lee accidentally heard a voice from behind the car in the middle of the journey. When he checked, he was surprised to see that the students were coming with him, even though it would be very dangerous, but he was proud of their solidarity. That night, they were worried about the safety of their friend who had an infection due to her injury, however, they couldn't stay in that room and had to immediately seek help. After that, Chi Yil desperately went out to the warehouse and found a car that they could use to escape. While looking for some tools for escaping, Chi Yil didn't realize that the alien was watching him. Knowing he was in danger, the other students rushed to help him. Thanks to good cooperation, Chi Yil managed to escape and survive the pursuit of the alien. After that, one of them proposed to make a loud noise to attract the attention of the alien. At first, the plan went smoothly, but the noise suddenly stopped, diverting the alien's attention back to them. All the students then rushed into the warehouse and got into the car, but unfortunately, Hirak said that he couldn't drive the car. The situation became increasingly tense, making everything chaotic until they accidentally threw the car key into a tight place. Knowing they wouldn't be able to save themselves, a student named Zhou Jiangsu sacrificed himself as a decoy to divert the alien's attention so his friends could immediately run away. In the middle of the journey, Lieutenant Lee's entourage was surprised to see many corpses lying on the streets. This made them very panicked because they thought the same thing might have happened to their friends. After the group's long journey, they finally found the first group's car. They saw the sign previously made by the first group. While checking the car, they were attacked by several aliens. Fortunately, after going through many obstacles, now the students had become accustomed to dealing with these aliens. Back to group 1, Jung So immediately attracted the aliens' attention so that his friends could leave. After all the students left that place, they felt guilty for leaving Jiang Su behind. But on the other hand, they also realized that Hirak was also not there. It turned out that he stayed to save Jung So. Luckily Hirak and Jung So were rescued by Lieutenant Lee who came with his entourage to the place. After saving all the students from Group 1, they returned to the military and were immediately greeted by Wan Bin and Yan Su who had already prepared a camp for all of them. The students were later officially appointed as reserve soldiers and got their own uniforms. The next day, the military leader had a meeting with the soldiers where they discussed 20% of the spheres they managed to kill and 50% of the soldiers who died from the battle. They planned to clear the areas on the border which were estimated to be the hotbeds of several spheres. For the mission, the leader intended to deploy the reservists because they couldn't send more troops since their numbers were very limited. The leader promised that if the students successfully complete this mission, they would all go straight home to their parents and get extra points for the CSAT exam. LT. Lee couldn't accept the suicide mission and sacrifice all the students, but he couldn't deny that because that was an order from the leader. In the evening, before the students' departure, they were given a pouch and a piece of paper. In the pouch, they had to put their hair or fingernails and write their testament implying that the mission was extremely dangerous to the extent that it was possible that they all wouldn't survive. That made the students ponder and couldn't sleep all night long. Lieutenant Lee and Sergeant Wan Bin understood their feelings right now so they prepared something for the students. Even though they only provided some food for them, for a moment, it managed to keep the students entertained, forgetting the mission that they would do the next morning. The next day, the students prepared to start the mission. Before leaving, each team was given a sphere detector that they could use to detect the aliens, but Lieutenant Lee ordered the student not to rely too much on the device and kept their focus wherever and whenever they were. After traveling long enough, the military car was forced to stop because the road was blocked by other vehicles. They were forced to continue their journey on foot. In the middle of the trip, the detection device suddenly turned on. Lieutenant Lee immediately commanded all the students to get ready in their respective positions to keep watching the surroundings. He then provoked the aliens to come by making a loud noise using a toy car. Hearing the loud noise, the aliens started coming. The students, who were already accustomed to the battlefield, immediately shot the incoming wave. Lieutenant Lee then divided them into several small groups so that their sweeping was more effective. Each group then checked all the houses and streets to make sure that every alien had been killed. At that time, Sergeant Wan Bin and several students entered a house, but instead of finding aliens, they instead found a student from another school wearing army clothes in a state of fear and injury, not only, the other group also found two other students, and because of that, Lieutenant Lee instructed them to take some rest first in an abandoned camp at a university. After that, Lieutenant Lee asked the three survivors what happened, they clearly experienced severe trauma after being abandoned by the soldiers who were supposed to lead them. 
One of the survivors named Yunso said that the adults deliberately used them as decoys and instead went to save themselves. Due to the severe trauma experienced by her, she also intended to kill herself. Yu Zhang saw her and tried to calm her down, but when Lieutenant Li showed up, Yunso suddenly pointed the gun at him. Her trauma led her to shoot Lieutenant Li, but Wan Bin suddenly showed up and blocked the bullet with his shoulder. Luckily, Wan Bin immediately got proper treatment so that his life could be saved. Wan Bin didn't want them to blame Yunso for that incident because he understood that she had experienced severe trauma after what happened to her. After that, Lieutenant Li gathered all the students and said that they would return to the base the next morning. With Wan Bin being injured and the finding of the three survivors, he couldn't guarantee their safety, so it would be better if they returned to the base, even though he would later receive the consequences. When Na Ra and Shi Yiul were on guard on the rooftop, they suddenly saw a sphere that seemed to be exchanging signals with the aliens below it. After that, the information was conveyed to Lieutenant Li and the other students. They also realized that the giant sphere was probably sending signals regarding which other areas they should attack. The giant sphere did that so that the aliens find their next target, they realized that not far from there, there was a shelter, and the students also thought that the aliens would move towards that place. To stop that, Lieutenant Li and the students finally made a plan where they planned to lure the aliens to come to the campus building and blow them up together. As a result, the students began to work together to make explosives and all the necessary preparations. After assembling several explosives, they then placed all the explosives at several points. Nara who was stationed on the rooftop, saw the giant sphere's movement so she immediately reported it to Lieutenant Li. Hearing that, they moved faster, because if not, then all their plans would fail. After that, the students started making a loud noise to provoke the aliens to that place. Because of that, the students who were still planting the bomb had to race against time where they had to finish before the arrival of the aliens. Knowing the situation, Lieutenant Li then asked Wan Bin to immediately take all the students to the opposite building while he would finish everything alone. Soon, thousands of aliens began to move very quickly into the building. Lieutenant Li who had finished connecting the explosive now had to try no matter what to get out of the building, but whatever path he was going to take turned out to have been filled with aliens. His was unending but he still couldn't find a way out. He finally entered one of the classes and contacted Wan Bin. He told him to blow up the building with him still inside. He knew that he had no chance to get out of the building, so he decided to sacrifice himself. He then apologized to all students because he couldn't protect them until the very end as he promised. After a very moving farewell, they were forced to press the trigger and part with Lieutenant Lee forever.